we are talking about how to get rid of your rigs that you have used to make your characters jump in the air from your videos. You're already onto a winner if you're already using the cheap stop motion winder rig, but what we need to do now is get rid of it. This is why it's not that important about the rig itself. It doesn't have to look fancy because at the end of the day, you're gonna be getting rid of it. Now, we obviously have the ability of using computer software now, and I'm going to be using Premiere Pro for this tutorial. The video that I did just before, that video was done and edited on Premiere Pro. And I'm going to show you exactly how you do it. Before you even begin animating, you have to set up your shots. So once you've got your shots set up, you put your puppets in it, and your rig in place you get the lighting and the camera exactly to how you like it and then you take it all away and you take it all away because you need to take the first shots of your film without any character or rig in it this is the most important part that becomes your plate hmm? no not that plate it becomes a plate which you can then use to get rid of your rig and it will all become apparent later on. This was a plate that I used for the video you've just seen. As you can see there is nothing in it, there is no rig, there is no puppet, it is just a blank picture of the set and this is done through Dragon Frame so basically, before you shoot on Dragon Frame, you're just taking one grab to give you this plate. Then you go on animating exactly as you would have done, forgetting that you even did the plate as long as you don't knock the set or the cameras or anything, the plate will work perfectly. This is me animating that sequence. And once you've finished animating the sequence, we come then into Premiere Pro. So let's see exactly what we do in Premiere Pro to get rid of that rig and turn it into something looking a bit more professional. Let's go. I have just opened up Premiere Pro and I've made a brand new project called Jump Tutorial. And this is the layout that we can see. All I'm going to do is come down to Import Media and I'm going to right click it and I'm going to click Import Media. I'm going to go to the video that I created in Dragon Frame. Once you've finished your video in Dragon Frame, you've finished all of the shots that you have made and you have confirmed all of your takes, you then have to convert it into a movie and it is normally converted into a AVI and this is an uncompressed AVI file and this is a movie that was created. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to press open. Open Sesame, here it is now in Premiere Pro. All I'm going to do is grab the video itself and drag it over to the timeline. There you go, it is now in the timeline. What I now need to do is grab this video, which is currently on video layer one, and move it up onto video layer two. That's gonna come very important later on. Before we do that, I'm gonna now go through the video. Here you can see me. I'm jumping up, I'm clicking my heels, and I'm landing, and bosh! You see it? That is the plate. Don't go there. What we now need to do is cut where this is and bring it in to the video layer one. I'm gonna press C on my keyboard to bring up the cutting tool and I'm gonna cut it right at the very point there. I'm gonna press V go back into normal mode I'm going to grab the video with the plate and move it down into video layer one Bosh. I'm then going to come 
into the center of that and I'm going to right click on my mouse and I'm going to add a frame hold. Just done it. Then I'm going to press delete which will get the left hand side out of the way. The right hand side has now become an image that I can pull out across the entire video. And then I will grab the other end and join it so it's the same length as the video itself. What effectively I've done is I have increased the plate so it is the same length as my video. And that plate is underneath the video of my puppet jumping up with the rig. What that then means is when I get rid of the rig, I have the layer of the plate with nothing on it underneath. When I add a mask, which is what I'm going to do in a second, the mask will hide the rig and show the plate underneath. All I'm going to do is go straight back to the beginning and I'm going to look at the first point that I need to make a mask and it is right here in the very first frame. So I'm going to start my mask right at the very beginning. I'm going to click and make sure that I'm actually on the video that I'm working on, which is a rig on video layer two. And I'm going to go over to my effects. I'm going to click onto effects controls. I'm going to go down to effects opacity and I'm going to click on this pen tool here. And I'm going to be making I'm going to be free drawing a bezier, which is basically free drawing a mask. I'm going to click on that. All I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to make the video a bit bigger so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to start drawing my mask. Now I'm going to come quite close into my puppet to avoid any shadows. Um, and I've just, all I'm doing is just right clicking and I'm clicking around where my puppet is. All the way around. If you need to, you can go in a bit closer. Now, am I not sure all of this? If I fast forward, it's because I'm boring myself, if not yourselves. Um, but basically, we are making a mask around around here, and then obviously we're coming really tight at the point that you can actually see the rig coming into contact. I'm going to zoom in even, even closer here, even closer. And when we get to the very end here, we just join it up by pressing it one more time. Boom. That is our mask. And if I go back to fit, you'll see that my puppet has disappeared. That is because it reverses it. So all we have to do is invert it and what will happen will be magical. When I press that invert, my puppet will reappear. The rig will disappear, but you won't notice the rig has disappeared completely because the plate will show through and it will be like um, my puppet has stood there without any rig being in place. Are you ready for it? Here we go. Bosh. There he is. There he is. And there is absolutely no rig in sight. Have I made myself clear? It couldn't be any easier. What I'm now going to do is just go a little bit bigger and when you get to this little widget thing here we can move this out and all that's doing is just feathering off the edges just slightly and it just stops it from being so harsh where I've put the points in and then I can readjust now as I need to just to make sure that we're not losing any of the hand and it just tidies up ever so slightly and it makes it all look nice and neat that is the first step we're not done yet there's quite a lot to go but it does get very repetitive so all we're going to do now is come down to the timeline make sure we click on the timeline and we're going to move one frame across by pressing the right hand button Bang. now what i need to do is make sure that every single one of these masks is adding a keyframe 
So to do that, I need to click the keyframe button, which is on the mask path itself. And I'm gonna click it by doing this right now. And what you should get is a little icon right there, which you can just about see, um, which shows that there is a keyframe. So if I go on to now the next frame, which is exactly the same as the first frame because I work on twos, I can again click on, I'm just gonna make it a bit bigger, you can't quite see it at the moment. You see the little, there we go. You see this here, this is to add a keyframe. I'm gonna go bang, click another keyframe there. Then I'm going to move along on the timeline again. And if you look at the mask, we've got to slightly tweak it just a little bit I think so we'll go to 75 so I can get a bit closer and just move the arm I think his arm just started to move ever so slightly uh, there we go I'm going to grab another keyframe there and then I'm going to move along again we're okay we'll grab another keyframe then we'll move on a third time and you might want to just fast forward this or I'm gonna fast forward this. Basically, I'm just moving along and every time I get to, um, to the next point, I'm just moving the mask and adjusting it accordingly. You must remember to click the keyframe for every single frame, whether it's moving or not. Otherwise, it drifts and then you have issues with the mask itself. I promise you, it is exactly what you need to do. I'm gonna continue doing this and uh, I'll see you at the very end. That's it, I've gone through the entire video and I've deleted out the rig by using the mask and you can see it now as I go through it backwards. I have keyed it out and that is exactly how you can get rid of a rig using Premiere Pro. All I'm going to do now is export it and uh, that's, that's pretty much all you've got to do. Premiere Pro, removing a rig, simple as that. Don't forget to make your plate. And why don't you do this yourself and show me your results? My name is Pete Ellis. This is my animated life. I hope you like this video. Let's see you in the next one. Peace.